you have a message to send to hell, give it to me and I'll carry it. These were the final words of Lavina Fisher before she was hanged. Today, they say her ghost still haunts the old city jail right here in Charleston. And today we're gonna talk about that and a few other of the most insane ghost stories here in Charleston. What's up everybody and welcome back. I'm your favorite YouTubing ghost hunting realtor, Bill Olson. And that's right, today we are talking all about the craziest ghost stories here in Charleston. Now, it's always my job to help people find their permanent residence. And the stories we're about to tell you are people that have found more than their permanent residence. Our first story takes place in the cemetery of St. Philip's Church and consists of not one, but two ghosts. See, in the late 1700s, there was a slave known as Boney. When the church caught fire, it said that he climbed all the way up to the top to fight off the embers and save the church. He stayed living around the church until he died, and they say that he can still be seen roaming around occasionally. Now, fast forward to the 19th century, and we have a little girl named Sadie. Her family lived on Church Street, and she had some friends over, and the conversation turned to ghosts, specifically the ghosts of Boney Man. One of the friends issued a challenge to Sadie, said, I'll bet you can't go into that graveyard. Take this walking stick, put it on his grave, and leave. Now, this was the middle of the night, and it was raining. Sadie, not one to believe in ghosts, ran out the door and said, I'll be right back. So Sadie took that walking stick and she ran into the graveyard looking for the gravestone to leave that walking stick so in the morning they could all go back and see that she had made it. She gets there and she slams it into the ground, turns around to run, but something had her leg. She couldn't move. So her friends, still waiting on her, thought that they would go in and she would be sitting on the gravestone just telling them how ridiculous they were to believe in ghosts. Well, when they went in, they found Sadie on the ground dead. She had literally been scared to death. But what was it that grabbed her leg? It was the walking stick. She slammed it into the ground and it went through her dress and she thought something had grabbed her. To this day, people still claim that they can see the ghost of a little girl with a walking stick walking around St. Philip's Cemetery at night. So right now it's just Julie and I walking down the street in Charleston right now in front of St. Philip's Church. There. They were just at the gate. I could, it was cold there. I could feel it. And they were there. How many are here? Next story takes us to arguably one of the most haunted buildings in all of Charleston, and that's the Old City Jail and the story of Lavina Fisher and her husband. Now, she is thought to be America's first serial killer. Now, her and her husband owned the Six Mile Inn, and she would feed the guests oleander tea to tire them, and once they would fall asleep, her husband would murder them. Both were arrested, tried, and executed at the city jail. But here's the kicker. When the executioner was getting ready to hang Lavina is when she said those famous words, if you have a message to send to hell, give it to me, I'll carry it. To which point she jumped, taking her death into her own hands. Now where this gets even crazier is some say that they never actually killed anybody. You see, the Six Mile Inn was located where they eventually built the Naval Hospital. So a lot of people think it was political corruption to frame them to take that land so that they could build the hospital. Wait, 
Gone. Gone. Our next story takes us over to Philadelphia Alley and the legend of the whistling doctor. See, Dr. Joseph Brown Ladd was known when returning home to always be whistling. He was always in a great mood and he was best friends with Ralph Isaacs. Now, their relationship began to sour. Instead, that it was over an actress. Well, they both wanted the heart of this actress and they decided that they were gonna duel it out for her. So they met in Philadelphia Alley for the duel. They took their 10 paces, turned and shot. They're both said to have tried to miss because they were both friends. But Dr. Ladd was hit in the leg. He was taken back to his house. 10 days later, he passed away from fatal infections. They say when you walk down Philadelphia Alley to this day, you can still hear him whistling up and down. Now, if you're looking to stay someplace haunted, book a room at the Embassy Suites on Meeting Street, just off of Marion Square. See, the building used to be the State Armory and the military college of South Carolina. And they say that a cadet who lost the top half of his head, who's affectionately known as Half Head, still roams the halls to this day. Many have claimed to have seen him. But even though due to his unfortunate circumstances, they say he is a friendly spirit and nothing to be afraid of, but I'll let you be the judge on that. Let me know in the comments if you've ever stayed there and seen him, or if you have any other ghost stories or anything that you've seen around town. And I wanna give a shout out to my friends Chris and Julie at Charleston Paranormal for all the amazing footage from around town of the ghosts. And as always, if you're looking to sell or buy a haunted or preferably non-haunted house here in Charleston or the surrounding areas, I would love to be your realtor of choice. Look forward to seeing you on your next video and stay haunted.